Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ashwini Priyadarshini Megur, also known as Avi, and I'm a PhD student in the field of biology. So today in this video, I'm going to be talking about the ordinary vitamin C serum. The solution that I'm going to be talking about is ascorbyl tetra isopalmitate. The formulation claims that it is made for dry skin type. It actually targets the dullness, signs of aging, hyperpigmentation. So it's a vitamin C serum actually and it does all the job of vitamin c talking in depth about vitamin c i'm not going to talk about a lot of things about vitamin c in this video because um, i will end up making a long video and that's not going to be interesting so vitamin c has different types so the most active form of vitamin c is l-ascorbic acid and there are different types of vitamin c as well which are inactive forms but in this solution, there is one ingredient that is really potent and works as similar to as L-ascorbic acid, and it is less irritating than L-ascorbic acid. L-ascorbic acid, in other hand, has the pH range of 2.6 or 3 something, which is quite acidic. But this one here, the, this ingredient that I'm going to be talking about in this video is really good. It is stable form. It doesn't... Um, kind of have any sort of allergic reaction on the skin it's quite gentle and does the same job of l-ascorbic acid and that is just an amazing amazing thing so stick till the very end because i'm going to be disclosing all the different types of ingredient present in this formulation and i'm going to be telling you if this product is worth purchasing the another information about this serum is that it's an anhydrous solution anhydrous solution is something that you apply after your serums first goes the cleanser then goes the toner then goes the serums and then goes the anhydrous solution and at last you top it up with a moisturizer so anhydrous solution means that it is going to be a bit oily so it's very suitable for dry skin type already because it is an oil-based serum so it retains the moisture now looking at the formulation the first ingredient is the coconut alkanes which means that it is derived from the coconut oil and this act as an emollient property which means that if there is any sort of water loss it kind of protects it and then lets it stay on the skin then there is tetrahexaldehyde ascorbate it is around 20 percent the formulation the first coconut alkanes is around let's say 75 or something range and then there is this tetrahexaldehyde ascorbate which is 20 percent in range okay vitamin c is a powerful antioxidant now you ask me what is an antioxidant antioxidant is something that helps to remove the pollutants from your skin helps to remove the causative agents that can lead to rupturing the collagen present on your skin which can lead to aging so it kind of reverses the aging and other than that vitamin c also has the potential to improve the hyperpigmentation mark and also even uh, in some cases it has shown to improve the early signs of aging that is the wrinkles and also near the crow's feet it kind of helps in a lot of ways and that's why it's a popular ingredient this tetrahexaldehyde ascorbate is a uh, is an inactive form of vitamin C and this one is a very potent one and that's why this serum costs around 23 euros which is quite affordable usually when you see this ingredient in some of the formulation they are very expensive because it is very expensive to formulate it but here ordinary does the magic you see it is not it is not that expensive to go and purchase. They make it so affordable for the people to try out different ingredients. And that's really good about this particular formulation. Then there is ethyl linoleate, uh, which in the formulation, it says that it is incorporated with vitamin F. So as per my scientific and chemistry knowledge, I know that ethyl linoleate is having fragrance whereas ethyl oleate is called as vitamin f maybe there is some spelling mistake probably ethyl oleate does a job of vitamin f which is acting again as an emollient it helps with antioxidant properties 
but ethyl linoleate is kind of a fragrance and i'm really confused here is there any fragrance in this this is really confusing right now then there is a hoba oil and tomato fruit extract which is really soothing for the skin improves the complexion hoba oil is known for its antioxidant properties and also moisturizing properties whereas the tomato fruit extract is good for improving the dullness and uneven skin tone so it is really good ingredients in general and the last ingredient is squalene you see all the ingredients in this formulation is crisp it's to the point and everything is oil based here so when there is oil based um, serums or else uh, let's say anhydrous solution they don't get absorbed into the skin that easily so it is something that you're gonna apply after the serum well the negative point about this formulation is that maybe it should have been in serum form not in the let's say let's say in the anhydrous form i i would like it to be watery easy to absorb into the skin than to just protect it as a shield maybe if they will add and change a little bit of the formulation by adding the first ingredient as water and then rest can be as it is and instead of ethyl linolate they can add ethyl olate which is really good so it's anhydrous so it goes after your serum so that is also a plus but it will help you in the winter season because it's gonna not let your skin dry out but other than that the formulation didn't rock i i didn't like it that much i think they just messed up but the ingredient of vitamin c that they have used is the proper ingredient to be used which is it doesn't cause any sort of allergic reaction it is not irritating to the skin it is just a amazing ingredient i love this ingredient and i'm very fond of this ingredient and i do say that it is good for sensitive skin it is good for dry skin type it is good for uh skin of color and 20% is a high percentage, of course, but most of the studies are done around like 5 to 15%. So if you have been using vitamin C for a very long time and then you want to try this serum out, then of course you can go for this serum. Don't jump directly to 20% of vitamin C because your skin is not used to it and it can be triggered or else it can just, you know, go in a shock and a new bump can form here and there. So that's that's the precaution that you have to take and always do a patch test before you use any sort of serum out there. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you have any questions, you can write down in the comment section below and also reach out to me on my Instagram handle. So thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure that you hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon in another the video. Bye!